spreads and can I can I visualize what these spreads are? So you're jumping out and you got to go through this to be able to have it uh, put down there. This is material that you've seen from level two and even level one where, where we were talking at level one about a G spread and an I spread. So, you know, being able to lay it out in this way, I think really can help you to visualize what's happening in terms of the yield spread versus the, a G spread over the, the, uh, the interpolated okay uh yield on the government bonds i think that you've got to have that skill to be able to do this and then you know be able then to put it together to to think about the i spread and now can you use that swap curve you're not going back to what you did at level two with the fixed rate on a swap and calculating those but i think that's where the qualitative uh, part starts to come in but a visualization like this is really going to help you to be able to pull it all together. And I think that this is something that you've got to be able to uh, handle so that when you come back and you look at this type of learning outcome statements about the advantages and disadvantages of spread measures and why option adjusted spread is considered the most appropriate measure. So we've got to get a handle on this. And so you've got to visualize those spreads and then you know, even getting into thinking about this, uh, this option adjusted spread, you can see it here, uh, visualizing, working through what is that option adjusted spread and uh, what factors are affecting that. So you can be able to work through these type of visualizations so that you know that the option adjusted spread, here it is, okay, it's the most appropriate measure because it's removing that value of the option and it's leaving the spread that represents just the credit risk. Okay, we're ignoring liquidity risk. I mean, if there's people out there who have a real in-depth background in fixed income, you know, that can work against you as well. So you got to get down to the basics. You know, I think visualizing this, walking through it, I think is a very powerful way for you to be able to handle these kind of learning outcome statements. So when we talk about the different spreads, you got to know those. Those walk through the calculations, the interpolation. If you can't interpolate, uh, then I think that you're in, uh, you know, a step behind the other candidates. Okay. Then stars all around this, the bottom up uh, approaches to credit strategies and top down. And don't get intimidated by the math. It's all the same that's going on there. That's going to be our formulas for duration and convexity and putting it together. That that excess spread formula. Come on, if you don't know the excess spread formula, I think that you're going to be in trouble on this exam, but I'll walk you right through it and show you how to put it together. Okay, so I think a lot of candidates are going to be able to get, you know, get in there and get those type of calculations. You know, it looks kind of intimidating, but, you know, then dropping down a little further here to talk about things like the tail risk and the value at risk and even the use of credit default swaps. These are two areas that I think you must be able to handle. And so, you know, you drop down, you know, I've got a great set of notes here that you can walk through. Here's calculating VAR. And, and I don't think the text does a really good job at, at showing you, uh, break it down into a two-step process so that you can do this calculation and you know what you're looking at. That's what's really important. Know what you're looking at, how to use it, how to do the calculation. That's going to get you the marks. That's what's going to push you over the passing score here. So I think that what you got to do is have this mixture of, yeah, bullet points, know uh, the definitions, and then really get into the applications here. Credit default swap. Hey, I've got a great beginner video on that. If you want to go through it and take a look at it, it's going to help you. The terminology is really tough there. You know, if, you, if you're coming at level three and it's been a while since level two, uh, um, then, you know, this is all new to you. If you're coming from level two, it's uh, a lot of repeat from that previous level. So uh, there's a little spin on it because we're doing the portfolio manager's, uh, you know, perspective here. So, you know, getting into pricing the CDS. And again, I think uh, the curriculum leaves a lot out. So you've got to have these kind of quick bullet points that can complement what you're going through and then get into the strategies. I mean, this is where the questions are coming. I mean, being able to apply these strategies, the long, short strategy, the uh, CDS curve, strategy and the basis strategy. Come on. I mean, if these aren't on the exam, I don't know what they're testing you on. Okay. So you've got to be able to handle this. You've got to be able to go through these kind of quick examples and know what you're looking at in terms of the calculations 
and the qualitative material. So, you know, that's what's going on here. That's what I'm doing. I'm walking through candidates, giving them explanations that they can use, okay? Not just quick A, B, or C, but, you know, tutorial. So you can understand what you're looking at. You can apply that. You can answer these kind of questions. I think that this is really critical for success on the exam. So when you look at these learning outcome statements, they look quite innocent. Okay, but when you get down to it and you start going through the material, you know, it's quite intimidating. And there's a lot of errors written in the curriculum uh, that I'm pointing out. You know, CFA Institutes has some of them in their errata, but there's others that I believe are, are they're wrong. Okay, <laughs> and there's no other way about it. So, um, uh, you know, a lot of people are sweating about that and sending me questions, question 17, question 32. Yeah, I know that these uh, there's errors there and there's inconsistencies between the blue box examples and the uh, end of chapter questions. Okay, so how do you handle that? You know, I'm saying don't sweat it. Let's look at this type of approach where you can get the answers because you know what you're doing. You know, it's not just, you know, this is your only exposure with a lot of candidates. The only exposure they're having to this material is uh, the uh, one blue box example that's there. So uh, I think that uh, to conquer this material, really what you need to do again is, you know, quickly going over having a, a, a understanding of the terminology knowing about the calculations and the calculations just repeat they repeat throughout the entire reading so i want you to feel comfortable knowing that you learn it once and you've got it now what i'm going to teach you is how to apply it in the different situations and scenarios and what i mean by that is how to apply it in different how to apply your knowledge onto different exam questions because that's what this is about answering those exam questions, getting on with it, you know, moving on, earning the charter and getting on building your business, building your career. So if you like what you see here and you want to explore some more, yeah, I encourage you to visit examsuccess.ca or courses.examsuccess.ca. Uh, you can buy my fixed income module and take a look at it. And I think that you'll get a lot of value out of it, especially if you're struggling on that. And even if you have another provider's material, it's an excellent compliment, something that can really help you push you over the passing score because you don't want to be doing this again next year or the next exam sitting. All right, well, that's it. It's Brian Gordon from Exam Success. One thing for sure, your exam date's only getting closer. So let's do this.